Hey friends, we shipped a lot of query performance improvements in Prisma version 5.4 and we are excited to share them with you. With me is Flavian, an engineer from the ORM team to discuss the improvements that we made. So hey Flavian, how are you doing? Good, thank you. I'm really glad to have you here and hopefully we'll be able to discuss exactly what changed. The first improvement that we made was on relation filters, specifically on how Prisma traverses to one relations. And if I understand correctly, we're now using left joins instead of subqueries to do that. And Absolutely. on this slide here is an example query with a relation filter searching for all comments uh, through the post to find an author whose name is John. And if you don't mind, Flavian, could you give an overview specifically of the improvement, sharing the old behavior, I guess, to say, for this query and why did we switch from subqueries to left joins and perhaps the performance impact on this particular query. Yeah, absolutely. So we used to use this pattern where we would look for the parent IDs in, and then we would make a subquery indeed to find the related records. Uh, in this case, we can see that we have two subqueries. Um, so we look for the comment IDs in, and then we select the post, and then we do another one for the post IDs in and we look for the user. Um, this is still needed at the moment for uh, filters on too many relations because we haven't been able to model correctly the semantics of like the every and some and non filters using joins. But for just two one relations, left joins turns out to be a lot more efficient in this case. So if we go for the before and after, we now have, as a lot of users expected us to, to do up until now, uh, we just have two clean left joins that goes over both relations, the post and then the user for the author, and then eventually specify um, the filter for the author. One quick note that I wanted to uh, specify here is that we're doing a left join and then adding some conditions that says like we, where we check whether it's it's not null. This is basically equivalent to an inner join. We're aware of that. The reason we're using a left join in, in combination with these is not null uh, conditions is because depending on how you nest the filters, sometimes we might not need these is not null conditions. And so for simplicity internally, we just always use left join and we add or don't add these is not null filters, which are equivalent to inner joins. If I understand correctly, the change only affects relation filters. And therefore, uh, I guess if I have a query that also fetches uh, relations, it would still use a sub query, correct? Absolutely, yes, for now. Uh, the other significant change that we made to Postgres and CockroachDB was how Prisma client fetches or works with enum values. And on this slide here, we have a user model with a role enum of user and admin, and we have an example query that fetches for all users whose role is admin. If you don't mind, could you share exactly what the impact was, I guess, on the previous behavior and how exactly it impacts Prisma client in terms of performance? As soon as you would fetch an enum or so that means like you have an enum in your selection set or as soon as you referenced any kind of enums in your queries internally the driver that we use query engine had to make additional queries to find out about this enum and the reason we have this constraint is because under the hood we use the binary protocol to talk to postgres unlike most javascript drivers, by the way, which only use the test protocol. And because the enum is a user defined custom type, uh, the driver has no idea what a specific enum is. So it needs to ask Postgres first, hey, I've got this ID that refers to a type, but I don't know what type it is. So could you please tell me specifically what enum it is? So that's the first query that our driver would do. And then a second one would be, okay, now that I know that it's an enum, could you please give me the variance of this enum? So uh, like user and admin here. And this would be done for every single enum you have in your query. So if you have three enums, uh, we would make two times three queries to the database. Now, usually this is not a problem. And usually means if you are using Postgres on a long running server. And the reason is that the driver is smart enough to cache the result of these queries. Unfortunately, if you use the client in a serverless environment, the cache is ditched every request. So 
for every single request that you will make that use enums, we would have to do this n times two queries all the time. And that was causing massive issues, especially uh, when your database is far away from your um, application because latency plays a role in there. These are the two queries that I used to mention. So here we have at the very bottom, we have the Prisma client query where we just select the ID and the role from the uh, Prisma client query that we've shown. And then above that, you have two internal driver query. These are the two queries that I was mentioning before. They were never logged by the Prisma client because our driver doesn't really let us uplift these queries. So they were kind of invisible unless you actually had a look at your Postgres large themselves. And so we've done some, some work to get rid of them. The way we're getting rid of them is by casting your enums to text. And the reason this is working is because since we're now casting the enums to text, when the driver prepares a statement to the database and the, and the database answers with the different types that will have to be encoded when we actually um, execute the statement. The driver no longer has to deal with enums, which are unknown types again to the driver. He, the driver only has to deal with text types. And because he doesn't have to deal with these enum types anymore, it doesn't have to send the enums query either. And so this looks like a fairly not useless, but not important fix. Uh, but we had many, many uh, users that were suffering terribly from this problem where some queries might go from a couple of milliseconds, such as this query. Honestly, it's just selecting a bunch of a bunch of records from a table. And this would go from a, a couple of milliseconds to, down to multiple seconds uh, because of these additional queries that were sent. And that would increase, again, the more enums you would fetch in a single query. That's that's the fix with regards to enums on Postgres and CockroachDB. Super cool. And for those, for someone who would be interested in, in I guess, catching these queries that perhaps the, the Rust driver that we use under the hood logs Prisma client is not able to catch, how would one be able to do that? So either by checking the Postgres logs uh, directly or by using some kind of managed service that surfaces uh, the logs. So any kind of SaaS usually do that. Ideally, mm -hmm. long term, uh, we will find a way to uplift uh, these queries into the Prisma client directly so that they are part of the usual logs. We don't have a solution for now. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not that we don't have a solution. We haven't invested uh, into that for now. But um, the enum case is the only one that we're aware of at the moment that truly really caused user so you shouldn't be expecting a lot more of like these so-called invisible queries on a daily basis well i'm pretty excited about this change i know a lot of people are impacted by this and moving on to the third query performance improvement was to do with bulk deletes and on screen is an example of a query that deletes posts whose id is less than 10 and greater than one could you go ahead and share exactly i guess what queries we used to run under the hood, perhaps now the query that Prisma client will now generate and how big of a performance improvement this would be. The, the fix for, for bulk delete, and I guess the, like the, the consequence is similar to other improvements that we've done recently. But so generally, this is what we were doing before and I'll get to, to my point later. So first of all, we see that we had some superfluous selects here. We're doing twice a select on post. That's something that we should have never done in the first place. But anyway, now we no longer, uh, not only are we no longer doing a superfluous select, but we're no longer doing any select at all. But really where the performance gains can come is in the delete statement itself, where what we used to do is first select the post that uh, you would want to delete and then passing the IDs of the post that we had selected uh, down to the mm -hmm. delete. And this could cause a pretty bad performance loss for users because if you had designed your filter based on an index that you might have on the ID or in the compound index for multiple fields, well, the additional ID in and where we would pass whatever uh, post you wanted to delete, um, this could basically mess up with your indexes because 
this is an implicit filter that we would add for you. And so you wouldn't, as a user, you would not necessarily be aware that we would be generating that. It's completely implicit. And so if you have a bunch of indexes on the fields of your filter, suddenly your query would no longer be using your indexes, right? And uh, yeah. if you have a table with uh, hundreds of thousands of records and you're counting on your index and suddenly Prisma is adding an in clause on fields that where you don't have any index, uh, this can go again from milliseconds, yeah, from milliseconds, or it depends where you see it, but from milliseconds to seconds or from seconds to milliseconds now with thanks to the fields. Yes. So that's the before. The after is just the delete because another gain that we get from that is that now delete is just an atomic operation. So we no longer need a transaction at all. So you go from one, two, three, four, five, back and forth with a database down to a single back and forth. And you also now have the guarantee that the filter is exactly what you've input in the client query. So you can just more easily rely on the indexes and you no longer have this kind of unpredictability that, that you might have before. That makes sense. Thank you for the entire explanation. And finally, I think the last big change was on how we handle app certs specifically for the non-native app certs. I know this is a whole complicated topic. We'll link to it in the comments, the difference between the native and the non-native app certs. But perhaps, uh, well, we kind of found out that we were running a superfluous or an extra select query. And the question is, how did we find this? Why was this the case? And why did it behave this way specifically here? Yeah. Yeah, so how did we find out about it? Well, just thanks to an issue, uh, I won't lie. Uh, we had an issue from mm -hmm. a user that just spotted that, that mistake from us. Why were we doing this extra query? Um, it goes down to implementation details, but under the hood, we use a graph to represent the different queries that we will have to generate based on a single one. So for instance, here for an upsert, in the case mm -hmm. of an native one, what we do basically is we first select and then we say, okay, if we haven't found any record, then we need to do a create. If we have yeah. found one, then we need to do an update. There is some dependencies between these nodes, right? If you do a update on a user and then you say you also want to update the post, the update on the post is what we call a nested update, right? Uh, it's a nested yeah. mutation. Most of the time, the dependencies that we set between the nodes of our graphs are one operation passes to the other. If you update a user and then you want to update the post of this user, the mm -hmm. dependency between the two nodes is you want to update the post of which user. So you pass the parent IDs down to down to the children nodes. And so this was just the case here where we weren't passing the proper dependencies, which was forcing our connectors to redo a fetch, although we had already fetched the data. So if we look at the query, the before and after, we used to do twice the same select, basically, right? Select user ID from user, select user ID from yeah. user, then only do the update. The after is fairly simple. We just do the select. What was happening here? Uh, well, the first read wasn't passing down the dependencies down to the update. And so the update didn't really know uh, for which parent, so it was redoing the operation. Now that we're passing the dependencies correctly, we are basically removed an extra select. So we first select, then we check internally whether we have or haven't found record. Based on that, if it's already here, then we do the update and then we fetch the, the result. I want to say here just one quick note. Mm -hmm. This example specifically is on MySQL. MySQL mm -hmm. doesn't support two features that we have. First, as you've mentioned, uh, native upserts where you might do yep. an insert on conflict, which is why we do this dance of doing the select and update or create. Secondly, yep. there's a second feature that MySQL doesn't support uh, at the moment at Prisma is the returning class for an update, which we have introduced recently on Postgres, which is why we need to do a select before and a select after. Um, this query would be very different on Postgres. Depending mm -hmm. on the case, it would either be a single operation or just two where we would just select and then update returning. Okay, that was a question I was just about to ask, but based on the slide that we do have on the screen, the dialect does seem to be MySQL, but thank you for the clarification on that. And with that, do we perhaps have any teasers on other performance improvements that we might see in the next few releases, perhaps? So I won't promise on any timeline, just talk about what we're working on at the moment. We are working on two things. First is introducing joins to fetch relations 
uh, we are actively working okay. on at the moment. Um, and the second topic we're working on is a bunch of other redundant queries that we might find in the system, such as the extra select that we've seen here. And we're also having a look mm -hmm. at distinct. So at the cool. moment, we always do a distinct in memory, and we're looking at ways to utilize um, select distinct from the database. And thank you for joining me and sharing your knowledge on Prisma client and all the things that happen under the hood. And for our viewers, I hope you found this video helpful. Please leave a like with your thoughts and comments. Feel free to reach out either on Twitter, Discord or Slack. We'd be happy to hear what you think. And with that, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Thank Thanks. you.